G'day everybody, I'd like to introduce you to my 2000 Toyota Hilux 3 litre turbo diesel 4 wheel drive. I've been wanting to make a new ute tray for ages now. This car doesn't really need a new one, this one works just fine. It's just that there's a few things I don't like about it, let me show you. You'll notice that this one is held together by nuts and bolts. These are great if you want to be able to pull things apart, but the car vibrations keep causing them to come loose. I've replaced quite a few of them since I bought the car. There's a lot of general wear and tear. Parts of the tray are flimsy and parts of it look like Swiss cheese with all the holes that have been drilled through it. The tight end points are all over the place and look quite messy, and it's difficult to fill up the car where the fuel cap is located. I want to add under tray toolboxes but can't because the tie down rail is in the way. The tray has drop down sides which I really like but the locating pins come loose and don't line up with the holes. If you look at the way that the tray is attached to the chassis it's all out of level and as a result I've used packing to, to fill those voids. As well as that those standoffs look like they're just hanging on, they've been bent and they're attached by bolts so I'd like to get rid of all that, gut it out and uh, make everything welded connections, except for the six bolts that attach to the chassis. I want to redesign the headboard and make it stronger and less busy. I'm not really a fan of the wire mesh because you can't tie any heavy loads to it. The taillights are all smashed up and instead of working on my reversing abilities, I'm going to redesign their housing so that they're protected from damage. I'll be removing this raised edge so that the tray can have a lift off canopy down the track. And it's going to be a little bit shorter, just because I think it'll look better. Wait, what, what is actually going on under here? Just look at all these holes and bits of metal going everywhere. I don't like it. When the car's running, you can hear a lot of vibrations. This top sheet is not attached very well. I'm going to be replacing the steel checker plate with aluminium. These are the old drop down sides. I'll be making some higher ones that can carry bigger loads. So in summary, I'm going to be making this thing a little bit lighter, a little bit stronger and much sexier. So let's get into it. So this is where I have my first complication with the build. 
I had this design planned where I would have holes along the side of the tray and I would be inserting these lifting pins, these quick release lifting pins that would be attached to ratchet straps. So you'll see the pins here, they've got a little red button that you push and when you push it the ball detents retract so that it would lock into position in the holes and you could you could move these things up and down the tray and take them in and out quite easily. So it's going to be it was going to be quite nice and I think this system still has potential. The reason it wouldn't work for me is the cost. So I got a quote here and it was basically $220 per pin and I would need at least a pin on each side of a ratchet strap. So I knew that this just wasn't going to work. So I had to pivot and change the design a little bit. And so that's what you're seeing now. All those, um, those holes that I drilled and the pins, the, uh, the little cylinders that I welded in there are now being cut out. So I thought that I'd be able to use these existing pieces of steel that I'd already cut to length. Um, if I could just cut out these little trapezium shapes, then I could slide some round bar through the center of the, the rectangle section and use that as a hold down point. And it would be nice and tidy and you wouldn't have these, these hold down bars hanging down the side of the ute tray. Yeah, a lot of my shirts have a, a hole patch right there from all the anchor grinding. <laughs> Here you can see what's happening. So I'm going to slide a big pipe down the middle of that, that section and then I can tie the ratchet straps around that when I'm attaching things to the tray. <laughs> So there is a fair bit of work doing it this way, but um, I really like how it ends up being all, all clean and tidy. Like it looks like it's one piece. It looks it looks quite custom, and I really like it. This is probably the biggest metal fabrication project I've ever done by myself. Um, it's tough doing these things when you're working full time because. You know, you finish work at 3 and you, you get home at 3.30 or so and you've really only got this two hour window where you're allowed to make noise. And so you just got to, you get home and you're still in your work clothes most of the time and you just get straight into it. <laughs> so based on the amount of footage that I recorded for this video, there's I think about 40 or 45 hours of work that I recorded, so probably more off camera as well, probably about 50 hours in this build. Uh, and if I was to do this, you know, full time for a few weeks, I could probably smash it out, but doing it a couple of hours a day or even less frequently, it, it does drag on for a few months. When I, when I cut out all these trapeziums from the, um, from the steel, it actually caused a bit of a bow in the steel. You can see I had a bit of a problem there. You can see it wobbling on the concrete. Um, and that was throwing out a bit of my squareness. This is the look of a man who doesn't see squareness. It's a lot of guesswork when you're, you're making a tray for your car, but you still need to drive your car. So I, I had to leave the old tray on the car for, for the duration of the build. So I was kind of just estimating, I took some rough measurements and I was estimating the dimensions of it and where the mounting points would be. So I was trying to do as much as I can while it was off the car and then I could just put it on the car and finish it off. If 
if you're ever making something like this, I think this is the most important stage, just doing the um, structure at the start and making sure that everything's square, everything's right, and then you can work off it quite easily. If you get your foundations right, then the rest of the project's quite seamless. But yeah, take the time to get everything square. Uh, one of the, the best skills when you're welding and fabricating by yourself is being able to clamp things and hold things into position so that you can weld them. And so what I'm doing here is I'm using some RHS on top and then I've put some three mil spaces in between the RHS and the cross piece that I'm welding. So that, that spacer is acting as the checker plate. So I'm lowering the support for the checker plate so that the checker plate will be flush with the top of the tray. This whole project has been done with a gasless MIG welder and uh, I'm really loving it because I'm used to dragging an argon bottle around. The convenience of this thing is so, so good. Just You just chuck a roll in and off you go. And there's a little bit, little bit more gas, a little bit more splatter and it's a bit stinky, but generally great worlds. I'm so excited about this. So there are a few things that I didn't like with my old tray. And that's the fact that these lights just hang down below the tray and they kind of rattle and they're flimsy. They're, a few of these are actually broken. Um, the license plate is off center and it sticks right under here and it's very hard to see it. Um, it's probably not actually legal in Australia. I don't like how this is all wobbling around. You can see it's actually broken here. Being held on by cable ties. And these lights don't work, the uh, night lights. So I've got a much better setup plan for this. What I want to do is have it actually installed in the tube, mounted inside, and I'll show you my lights. You're gonna really like this. The indicator lights, I've got these. These act as the indicators, park, or break and night lights. And uh, when you indicate, I believe that they have a little swishy effect. So it goes swoosh, swoosh. These are my reverse lights. They are so cool. They're just so rugged and solid and they, they've got mounting positions on the outside, easily accessible. If these break, I can just unscrew, connect them again. And then this little guy, It's just a little uh, LED, LED, and that will be for the license plate. Yeah, it's just a nice, tidy little setup. You'll see, uh, see what I do with the license plate.
I thought it would be a good idea to use nut certs on the number plate holder. That way you can just attach it and deattach it from the front with bolts. You don't need nuts and washers. Here I'm marking some holes for the mud flaps. So again, I'm gonna use some nut certs and just some rubber matting. I find that mud guards tend to get damaged and knocked around quite easily, especially when you're off-road. So uh, if I'm using rubber matting, it's free to, free to move around and it's easy to replace if it gets damaged. You'll notice I'm taking my time here, stepping up the drill bits each pass. I'm not just starting with a 12mm drill bit, it's just too hard. I'm actually quite addicted to these nuts so things now, they're just so handy, you can put them anywhere. So I'm doing this all now before I put the next cross member in because I wouldn't be able to fit the drill in between the two cross pieces if I would already welded it in. And now I'm just standing up the tray so I can finish off all the welds on the underside. One thing that I try and do more and more with these projects is getting your workpiece in a good position. So if you, if you find that you're contorting your body to you know, get in a tight space or work upside down or something, it's just bad, it's uncomfortable and you won't enjoy it. So get your workpiece in a good position and go for it. Most importantly, you just gotta sit down and admire what you're working on now and again. Not, not for too long though, you don't wanna feel like you're staring at yourself in the mirror, but you know, Take some time, appreciate it. All right, this was a pretty exciting step. So I'm now underneath the car, taking off the license plate, clipping all the cable ties, taking all the electrical wires, uh, disconnecting it from the old tray and undoing all the mounting bolts. Now I'm looking for a place to dump the old tray. I wasn't sure how long this was going to be sitting in the backyard, but um, fortunately someone actually came and bought it on uh, Gumtree. So someone came and picked it up for a couple of hundred bucks, so it was nice to see it go. This is my neighbour Rob, the Sparky, giving me a hand lifting off the old tray. We were both very surprised at how heavy this thing was. Definitely underestimated it. The car looked so funny without the tray, it was like a snail without a shell. And I uh, had a tough time doing a U-turn in the backyard, it was quite boggy and there's just no weight on those back tyres anymore, so it was skidding all over the place.
So the plan for attaching the tray to the car was to use these two rails on all the chassis mounting points. So it's going to pre-drill all these holes and then bolt it to the chassis and then basically place the tray on top of it and weld it to those rails. So now that all the hole positions are marked, I'm just drilling out the holes and then it's going to go back on the chassis. I think this is a much better mounting method. Um, you, if, I don't know if you remember on the old tray, it had legs coming down to each of those points. And of course they were all out of level and that's why they had packing under each one. But this is, you know, two straight rails, so it's going to be perfect. You'll see what I do with the fuel filler line a bit later in the video. Now I'm sliding on the tray. I need to I needed to get it in position so that I could do the headboard. It was just too hard to get the angles right to match the, the cabin. So now I'm cutting these posts and I'm gonna bend them into shape. So I just want to get my angles right, that's why the tray's on the car. This is probably the fiddliest part of the whole build. Just getting the angles right, getting it symmetrical on both sides. And um, getting that, that triangular wedge the right dimensions. Using a ratchet strap here just to hold it in position. And now I'm going to repeat on the left side of the tray. I wish I could tell you I had drawings and plans for all this, but in all honesty, it was a lot of eyeballing and stepping back, looking at it. Is this, is this going to be the right position? And um, at least I knew that whatever angle I bent it to, I could always fill gaps with the world or I could um, just overbend it and then I could compensate on the opposite side. Now that it's where I want it, I'm putting a few tacks on and I'll be able to then remove the ratchet straps and lay the top member at the top of that uh, headboard and that will allow me to draw on my angles. Again here, I'm just eyeballing it, cutting that angle, and then I'm going to have to cut an angle also on the, the top piece. There's, there's actually a slight gap um, between the two pieces, but I fill that in a bit later underneath. I just put a slither of metal in there and, and weld all the gaps. It's funny on these, these bespoke jobs where you only have to make one of them, you know, if I was to make 100 of these U-trays, I would get everything perfect and I'd know all my dimensions and my angles and I'd be able to punch it out but with these ones you just um, you're really wrestling with it and you it's kind of anything goes and you just make it work so making one of anything is usually a lot harder than making like three or four of them I mean obviously there's more work in making three or four of these but your um, your process changes and becomes much more efficient the more you have to make I'm just welding a support here so the checker plate has to mount to something these are just the backing plates. Things that you won't see, but you need them to, to make it work. And then exactly the same thing here, where the edge of the sheet meets the end of the tray, there's nowhere to support the checker plate. So I've just welded on these little brackets. Now I'm marking out the center lines for the pipes. Doing a bit of quick math, calculating the distance that they need to be separated by. The 
Yeah, I, I couldn't live with myself if these things weren't square. That's why I'm taking so long here, getting everything right. <laughs> It's funny how if you make something, you know all the imperfections and everything wrong with it. But um, if someone was to come and look at it, they wouldn't even notice. So there's uh, a few things on this trade that I notice, but uh, other people don't. And I think I might just keep them to myself. Do you ever wonder how productive you could be if there were three of you? If you haven't got one of these little, these little pistol grip things for your spray can, I'd recommend getting one. They're like a couple of bucks from the hardware store and really handy. They save your finger. Okay, it's so the moment of truth now. I'm putting the tray back onto the rails and I'm going to put a few tacks on to hold it in place. I can't remember exactly what I was thinking at this point, but I think it was something like, damn, that looks good. That's my uncle giving me a lift. Now I'm just finishing off those welds. This is very, very close to finishing, or at least mounting it to the car. So I'm, I'm actually, I do remember how I felt. I was buzzing at this point. It's like the sword in the stone. Okay. Now I'm just putting those six mounting bolts on. Okay, and now finally taking off that fuel line. So yeah, you could, it might be hard to tell, but there's no way I would be able to fill, fill up the fuel tank from where it was. It would have been running uphill. So I had to get a bit tricky with this one. Just give me it a clean. Probably hasn't been cleaned since the day it was made. And doing a, a slight modification, taking off one of the brackets. Um, I ran down to the automotive store and grabbed as many of these various radiator hoses as I could find. I couldn't get a, a roll of that hose size that I needed. So I'm using a bit of a Frankenstein mismatch of hoses and um, pipes to connect them. So you can see the thinner hose is the breather hose and then the fat one is for filling up with diesel. And um, this was meant to be a temporary solution, just strapping it to that bracing pole there. But uh, it was one of those things that is still on the car. <laughs> it's now been about six months since I finished it. <laughs> so I, I will come up with something better, but until then it, that's where it'll stay. Uh, now I'm just redoing all the electrical, so I've had to find a few faults and replace a few wires and now just, just wrapped it up, protected it, and attaching the number plate light. I didn't use nut certs on the number plate light, although I wish I did. Uh, these are the reverse lights going on. The neighbor has a slight obsession with the birds and um, feeds them a lot of food and they're overpopulating. <laughs> so you probably hear a few bird noises now and again. And these are the indicator lights slash brake lights slash night lights. I was very excited to see these work. I'm sure you've heard a lot of things about the swooshy effect. Hey Nan, could you help me for a sec? Can you just tell me if the lights are working? Lights? Yeah. Bright indicator? Yeah. 
that indicator. Yep. Um, Two little square ones, what are they? Oh, they are very, very, oh yeah. They're flickering. They're flickering. They're flickering. Flicker, flicker, flicker. Yeah. Tell me if they stop flickering. I'm not sure why it does that. They're definitely 12 volt lights and it's a 12 volt battery on my car, but they do flicker less when the car is on. Probably regulates the voltage a bit better when the car's running. If anyone knows, please tell me. I'm trying to fix the flicker issue still. These um, mud flap heights are actually illegal. It has to be at the midpoint of the tire. Um, and after making this video, I have put on longer ones. So don't bust me. I was actually planning on getting this aluminium checkered plate cut on a guillotine at an engineering workshop. I found that the circular saw is actually really effective. It's almost just like cutting a, a piece of um, acrylic or perspex or something. So my plan to take out the, the rattle and the vibrations from the checker plate was to put some Sikaflex, which is just a, a black silicon type adhesive on all the surfaces, all the contact points. This works really well. And now we're just putting some texture marks above where all the cross members will be so that we know where to drill our holes for the rivets. We had a good little system going here so I was going around drilling the holes and Rob's putting in the rivets with his fancy little rivet tool. Come on, Rob, hurry up, mate. It's actually really funny because he was he was flying along with this rivet tool that he's got for his impact driver. As soon as I pointed the camera around, it started jamming up. So, so it was excellent timing. Now he's, uh, he's using another one. Silicon was so messy and it gets on everything. So this, this was a pretty long afternoon, it took a few hours to do all this, but now we're cleaning off all the texture marks. And uh, I was getting ready to get away for the weekend, so I managed to get out of Sydney for the weekend. And uh, this is at my mate's farm. And I was very proud of the tray. At this point, it was drivable. Uh, it wasn't quite finished. There's more things I want to do, but this is just a little checkpoint. So really, really happy with the way those um, those triangles look cut out of that steel. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? It's really too nice to put anything on, to be honest. Like, I, I wouldn't want to scratch anything at this point. <laughs> No rattles or vibrations, and I think this tray is actually about half the weight of the old one. You definitely notice it in the suspension, let me tell you. One thing I didn't realize is that if you take all the weight out of the back of the car, then the springs actually harden up, they stiffen right up. And so it feels like you're, um, you're driving without suspension. Here's a little flashback. This is a toolbox that I used to have attached to the tray and it was just full of all my ratchet straps and, and uh, automotive tools, uh, air compressor and jump starter. And so I'm about to attach some under tray toolboxes, get, get the tool off the tray and store it underneath where there's heaps of space. Thank you. 
Here I'm just marking where the holes need to go and guess what I'm going to attach it with? Nut certs, baby! Yeah, we had a lot of rain over the last few days and um, the water was somehow getting into those um, those cross pieces. I've since found where the holes were and filled them up with silicon. Now this is a special tool that I got. Uh, it's for attaching nut certs. So you just put it in your drill and uh, similar to the, to the rivet adapters that you can get for your drill, but this makes it a lot easier. I kept my ratchet straps on the right side and on the passenger side I just put a, a socket set and a jump starter, air compressor and an impact driver for changing the wheel if I have to. Okay this is really really close to the end of the project now. This is the These are the drop down sides for the tray so I'm just making a couple of uh, rectangular frames and I'm going to be welding some sheet metal to these. So I just wanted something really simple, simple, rugged, robust and um, easy to make. Okay so this steel I did get cut to size. I would have had a tough time cutting these straight edges um, at my place. And I probably over specced the, uh, the gauge of the steel. I think it's 3 mil. And I probably could have got away with 2 mil or 2.5 mil. And it would have taken a bit of weight out of it, but not jeopardized the strength too much. I think as it stands, they weigh about 15 kilos each, which is quite heavy. Here you can see all the mounting hardware that I had to buy for these sides. So those are the strap hinges that get welded on gudgeon pins and then the uh, toggle latches. So before I paint it and give it a clean up, I'm um, just getting all the hardware attached, getting it in the right positions and then I'll take it off and make it look prettier. Uh, definitely not pretty, but um, prettier.
What do you think, Nan? Do you like it? What, like what? The tray. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>